Colloids are particles dispersed in the water. Colloids are air dispersed in the water. If we study microbes from another aspect, so like particle, so they are actually colloid particles, but with big difference, so they are alive. We are trying to build a new innovation hub which will um, try to find new problems for the industry and also uh, develop solutions. The idea is to have this international program in which we can involve the colloid biology field. I'm uh, Aleš Lapanje, uh, a scientist from Slovenia. Uh, I'm generally trained uh, molecular microbiologist, uh, but uh, how to say, the last years, uh, last, yeah, let's say already seven years, establishing new field of colloid biology. So that is mostly which, so I'm working the field between the biology, microbiology, molecular biology and physics. It was an idea. We started firstly understanding the environmental microbes, how they action. We, we found microbes are mm, not just dispersed everywhere. So they form biofilms, flocks, mats, or different structures. We found there are so different reactions going on. If you have in laboratory conditions suspensions, or if you put like particles. And we know that time that usually they are in size of more than 10 microns, yeah? So, and microbes are in size of micron, yeah? So it means it has at least 10 partners together. And then, how to then to make such conditions? It was a big question. So then we studied a lot um, particles, yeah? The, uh, nanoparticles and so on. And we hit to the field of, uh, call it physics, and of course call it chemistry, which were well, many years ago, and maybe in 50s, 60s, already 1960s, established field, like call it physics, call it chemistry. And then we said, okay, but if we study microbes from another aspect, so like particle, so they are actually call it particles, but with big difference, so they are alive. So if they are alive, so it means they are changing all the time. So it's dynamics. And we, we said this is, call it biology. So it's very different than chemistry because these are inert particles, they work uh, some chemical reactions in physics, they are interacting with each other in a physical way and here we are combining biological and physical interactions and that is what is causing to, to say new field. Yeah. Colloids in general, if you say in physical way, yeah, uh, like physics are saying. So colloids are particles dispersed in the water. Colloids are air dispersed in the water. So like foam, you know, these are colloids also. Or you have particles in the air, like dust particles we could see. Or let's say rain. Rain with very small particles or mist, uh, it's also colloid. Everything is colloid, either solution colloid, or you have different fractions are dispersed in different um, new, let's say, uh, media or something like that. So these are all colloids. And you have like when you drink, let's say, juice, yeah, they are colloids because they are small particles which you see, they are not, uh, it's not transparent, transparent liquids. And uh, in some cases they are stable, so they stay like juice, like it's staying in the store, it's like this, and or tomato juice which is sedimenting down, so these, these are not stable. So these are from physical point of view, yeah. Uh, similar, they are bacteria. So if you can make bacteria in the suspension, they are, uh, it's cloudy suspension. So you see that there is something inside. It's not soluble, like you put uh, sugar into water. So there is nothing. You just see water, if you taste it, you taste the sugar. This is not anymore colloid. Yeah? Uh, so you, you, you need to have something inside there. We were interested in the interaction between microbes. I mean, the first thing is, what is the interaction with the microbes? Is it that one microbe is jumping on another? So this is not, I mean, the real interaction. It can happen. There are cases, of course, they're predatory bacteria, they attack and eat others. But usually interaction is the, is the biochemical way. So one bacterium is doing something. It's producing, like, let's say, from oil producing sugar, for instance. And, but the sugar is good for another one. It's eating this sugar and making from sugar 
acetic acid, yeah, and from acetic acid something else, yeah. And these are interaction in the in the microbial world. So the interaction is from the chemical biochemical way. If you understand the physics of this under interaction, so not the chemistry biochemistry, it means the big problem that you have it's always the distance because the distance determines how much of each microbe will get from this interaction. So closer you are, you are better interaction you have. It's like you know you wouldn't have internet, you will uh, have a friend in US, yeah. So it will be very low interaction. So, but if you have friends close to, to each other, you have more uh, close interaction. You have with wife, you have very close interaction. So it's always about the distance. Yeah, and in this case, it's similar. So more closer they are microbes, they are better interacting. So that is not only the case. So they need to um, microbes between them. They are competing in, in the in the real world, or they are helping each other. So to to live better, or they are let's say eating each other, so it's everything there. But if you are in long distance, this interaction is lower. Or if they are in long distance, might be more competitive ones. So if you put together, they might start to collaborate. And because we have huge possibilities, huge, we have huge possibilities of interaction, because we have millions and millions of different species of microbes, it means we can explore million years yeah, of these interactions. This is something what is driven us. So it's firstly, it's how we can study this. That that is big question. So how you can actually two microbes stick together? So how they can make them to, to interact? Usually, of course, it's you just wait. That is so you wait and wait and wait and you see maybe they will start to interact or not. But this is not uh, it's not a good scientific approach. You need to. Uh, make experiments. And if you make experiments, you can come up with some other possibilities. The first thing was to develop a method to do it. And in this case, we develop a method where we can change charge. And if you, if you change charge, and charge, electrostatics in this case, uh, electrostatics are one of the major forces in the universe, so it's everywhere. And this is very versatile approach. You can use any sort of thing to do, uh, attachment, uh, distribution of cells, or aggregation. So if you change charge, let's say maybe yeah, you have two microbes, one is minus charge, one is plus charge, it's like a magnet, so they just stick together. And you have very close interaction in this case. And uh, if you have close interaction, we make the, such a method, so we can build not this sort of approach, we can make like this, uh, any sort of. And if we have more bacteria, we can make a structure, like, a, like let's say we put uh, together uh, two to three bacteria, we put together another one, and we build a structure which is bird. Yeah, it's just a structure, but in this particular, let's say this is already community of bacteria. If we make this community, so each of these is interacting with each other. But if you make a special distribution, like uh, in this way, so which one is interacting closer? So this. Three guys, so these three, they're interacting very close interaction. But if these two, they are not. But between this, all the microbes, this community, uh, the, the new product that is take, uptaken by this one is something that is changing the whole biochemical process. First, we can say, okay, it's it's crazy idea at the beginning, as scientists do crazy things, but uh, we ha we had to have uh, solid grounds. So solid, it means you should think about the applications. Yeah, you need to develop a simple methods, and that uh, the industry can use it, or that we help the environment to clean it, to uh, produce um, green substances. Yeah, that we need. So we know that communities are an environment. So even let's say oil that we have on the ground, they were caused by the by the microbes. They were digesting the plant material. So this what we using now as an energy source was based on the communities that were chewing that. Why is this so close to the application? This exactly this. So the community is robust. So different bacteria together, they are working better than one. You can apply this in the let's say pharmaceutics, producing new compounds. We have a lot of projects in the bioremediation because in the environment, if you put the bacteria that you have in the lab, will not survive. So you need to have community that is interacting and is better surviving. Like, 
let's say if you put one person into desert, it's quite difficult to survive. If you put 10, it's much better. At least they will interact, find a way. Uh, one is walking one distance, helping, calling help or something. It's better. Yeah. If you have a million people in the, in the desert, they will organize themselves. Yeah. And it's similar here. We had quite a lot of projects like cleaning water, drink water from pesticides, which is big, of course, problem in Europe. Then uh, cleaning uh, oil uh, polluted uh, uh, soils. Then we have lignin reusage. These are fields that, from this crazy science, are now fueling these applicative um, projects, new applicative products, and so on. Can you imagine in the future that you don't build anymore buildings, but the living organisms are like walls, for instance. Yeah. So like you have structures that are alive, so that they are adapt to yourself. So if you can use this concept in such, so maybe in a few hundred years, maybe it will be possible something like that. Like or tissue engineering, we don't build anymore with just chemical aspect material, but we build with living things that will adapt to our needs. The first thing is, of course, there are always problems, yeah. Everything is possible. So it's possible to make uh, super bugs, communities, killing everyone, yeah. We are actually mm, developing methods that are going in the opposite way. Uh, for instance, if, you, if you, you can put a seed, yeah, and the plant is growing, so which will help us, yeah. So it's similar ways. Like you put, uh, let's say, uh, firstly you put these two together, on, on a surface. And we know that these two can only attract this one, but not this one. So if it attracts this one, so it's building another community, it's with this free, this cannot attach. So if this is super back, I cannot establish community. This approach we actually apply it in, in, in uh, mouth microbiome, so that periodontal disease can be cured or prevented in this way, so that we build such a community that will not enable microbes that are pathogenic to establish uh, their own community. So we are de dealing in this opposite direction how to help that, yeah. My name is Tomasz Szriawec. Uh, I come from the Institute Jozef Stefan and uh, my background is molecular biology. So CERN Bio project is a European project. Uh, it's funded by the Horizon 2020. It uh, connects uh, six partners from five European countries. And uh, it is uh, designed in a way that um, Institute of Josef Stefan is in, the, in its center and is collecting knowledge from all the partners and uh, together we are trying to build a new innovation hub which will um, try to find new problems for the industry and also uh, develop solutions for it. So the partners um, would say come more from the chemical and physical um, world, uh, the world which we were not um, engaging in, in uh, previously. And it's something that is very important for the field of college biology. So we are bringing in their, um, res let's say, results and knowledge, knowledge that they have gathered, but also mainly the methodology that they are using and that we do not know so much. Objectives, I uh, would say, are three. The first is this transfer of knowledge, which is happening from the partners to the, um, the center institution, uh, Josef Stefan Institute. The second one is um, uh, to, let's say, establish new collaborations, new connections and build a network. Firstly, internationally and secondly, internally, because Josef Stefan Institute is a big, the largest institute in Slovenia. And we uh, have realized that um, internally we do not collaborate enough. And this project is also helping us do that. And thirdly, uh, we are building within this project a new entity. It will be an innovation hub which will um, work with um, partners, industrial partners, to understand their problems and then to provide solutions for them. Mm -hmm. 
And so working with industrial partners already, we have realized that um, the basic science that um, college biology is providing, the basic results that we are getting, um, are touching the problems that the industry has. So it's mainly just understanding their specific needs, because the output of college biology is sometimes already a solution for the industry. So we now have to find which industries have which specific problems and then how to tackle them. I'm Rocío Barros. I'm working here at the University of Burgos at ICRAN, the International Research Center in Critical Raw Materials for Advanced Industrial Technologies. And I am the head of the ICRAN Research Group Environment, Sustainability and Toxicology. The University of Burgos is uh, supporting the project and is working in the project in three levels. Um, so first of all, we are leading the dissemination and communication activities in the project in order to raise the awareness and the engagement of different stakeholders that can be interested in the discipline of uh, colloidal surface biology. Secondly, we are also supporting the Joseph Stefan Institute in different training activities as project management, uh, proposal writing, also different laboratory trainings in different techniques. Finally, from the institutional point of view, we are interested in launching uh, for the next year a new PhD and master program focus, uh, well, an international uh, PhD and master program focus on in the colloid biology field. So we have the institutional role in the project. So the idea is to have this international program uh, involving different uh, international universities as uh, Wageningen University, Ghent University, in order to have this program in which we can involve the colloid biology field.